Hi YouTube, today I wanted to talk to you about one of my other conditions known as SSD. SSD is just another name for single sided deafness. This means that you're deaf in one ear. And this can be just either a significant hearing loss or complete, complete deafness in that one ear. But usually it is complete deafness. Uh, whilst you will have normal hearing in your other ear. SSD is pretty much always going to be a permanent condition that you'll have to live with for life. Who can get SSD? Anyone can get single sided deafness as it equally affects anyone. Some people, like I just said a minute ago, can be born with it. And this can either occur on its own or it can apart if it occurs another or it can oh I can't talk to that. Or it can occur as a part of another condition, such as microtia, which if you want to know more about that, see my previous video. And um, although saying this, single sided deafness is more commonly more commonly occurs in those aged between 35 and 54 years old. What causes SSD? SSD happens when sound is unable to reach the cochlea, which is the inner part of the ear. So this bit right in here. A bit that you can't see. Um, sorry about that. Hair squeaking. Um, yeah. I've lost my way. Sorry about that. Um, did, uh, where am I? I'm lost. Oh. <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I know. Right, okay. Right. Oh. So yeah, that's when sound... That's when sound is unable to reach the cochlea, the inner part of the ear, or it can also occur... Or it's also when it's unable to do this perfectly. And due to the sound not being able to travel to the cochlea, and this means that no... Oh, I can't talk. I mean, that no brain impulses are sent so this means that the brain is unable to detect the hearing. Single-sided deafness can also occur through a number, number of things, such as physical damage to the ear, physical damage to the cochlea, damage to the nerves, trauma from head injury, pressure on the cochlea, infections to the inner ear, measles, mumps, meningitis, ear tumours, brain tumours, sudden deafness which occurs for no reason, circulatory conditions or disorders, Meniere's disease, I think I pronounced that right, I'm not 100%. Know. We'll go with that. Um, microtia. How does SSD affect people and signs and symptoms of SSD? Well, to be honest, SSD can affect people in many different ways. It, you know, it tends to be person to person. But something which commonly does affect people with single sided deafness is actually having difficulty locating sound, so like knowing where it's coming from, what direction. Uh, sorry, I'm reading off the script so that I remember, I think. I've got so much to say. Da -da. Um, some people can struggle with this more than others. Um, some people can just find it difficult to locate one particular direction of sound, but they may know where other sounds are coming from, or just not one specific, specific direction. Some may, some may struggle with splitting background noise from a particular sound or a person's voice. So someone might be talking to them, but they can just hear the cars, like cars in the background, and they can't actually hear the voice. Um, Single-sided deafness can make some basic and easy tasks a lot harder and difficult to perform, such as crossing a road, which is something everyone takes for granted and just does naturally. You know, something you taught from a young age is how to cross a road. But um, due to single-sided deafness, due to not knowing where sound has come from and having to rely heavily on the one ear that has hearing and obviously your sight as well and you just have to hope that you know you can get through with them and um, also busy places such as having a meal in a restaurant or cafe can be hard family meals out parties social events or gatherings all of this can greatly affect people with single-sided deafness and a fair few people with single-sided deafness pull themselves away from social situations not because they're unsocial and they don't want to mingle and, you know, make friends and things, but just purely because they can't hear and they don't want to have, you know, they don't want to have to struggle with what's going on, sounds and noises and that. And so, yeah, often, to be honest, it's easier to avoid these situations. I know I personally have done it myself and just sort of gone, no, I'm not going to come. Especially when it's people that aren't aware of your hearing loss or don't fully understand it, then it's harder for them to understand how to react around you and things like that and what to do to help. But however, some people do try to be a part of these social gatherings and conversations and things, but 
they just are unable to follow the conversations and so they uh, feel excluded and isolated from the rest of the group and the conversation. Again, I've experienced this myself so many times. Um, how many people are affected with SSD? It's actually believed that there will be around around 9,000 new cases of single-sided deafness per year. So that's quite a huge number of people every year to be diagnosed with it. But obviously this is not an exact number. Um, this is just a rough estimate of how many new cases are found each year in in the UK or also in America. So, you know, I guess this just shows really how little is actually known about single-sided deafness because there's not a lot known about That's part of why I'm making these videos about all my conditions is just to, you know, raise awareness, get people to understand things, that sort of thing. And single-sided deafness, there's not a lot known about it at all. So, you know, like I say, that shows how very little is actually known. Although those 9,000 new cases a year obviously is a very significant amount of people to be diagnosed. That's a lot. That's a lot more than I thought, to be honest. Treatment of SSD you should always start with consulting your local GP if you feel that you may be suffering from um, single-sided deafness or hearing loss. If they feel it is appropriate, they will then, which they, to be honest, most, most of the time do, they will then refer you to an audiologist who will conduct hearing tests and further examinations to find out what's going on. Or they may even refer you to an ENT specialist, which is an ear and throat specialist. And then, yeah, like I say, they, they'll conduct investigations to find out what's going on. And then from there, it will depend what type of hearing loss you've got, if you've got any. Some, you know, it could be something simple that can just be treated, or it might actually be hearing loss, that again, they'll then treat that the best they can, or aid it. Um, and yeah, like I say, it just depends on what type of hearing loss you have and the cause of it. I mean, for example, if it's caused by an infection or a tumour, the first thing that's going to take their main priority is to deal with the tumour or the infection and clear that up. Because sometimes if you remove the tumour or treat the infection, I forgot what I said then, um, then yeah, it can mis like restore your hearing because it might just, uh, your hearing might just deteriorate because of that, like because of what's going on. But, you know, obviously it's not always the case, that's why they need to investigate. Um, but yeah, like I say, no, I've already said that bit. Um, you yeah, know, usually single-sided deafness hasn't got a, isn't, oh my god. Usually, usually the cause of SSD is not known, and so it is not treatable. Therefore, the hearing loss cannot be repaired. To be honest, once you've lost your hearing, there's no going back, you won't ever get it back. Um, yeah, one this may be the case can include if you've had a stroke or vascular event. However, if you have single-sided deafness due to microtia, like I do, or it's found that your single-sided deafness cannot be repaired, there's a hearing aid device which doesn't sit in the ear, like normal one like this one, you probably can't actually see it. There you go, like this one, put it in. Oh. And yeah, this um, hearing device is known as a Baja. This literally means bone anchor hearing aid. So this means that you'll have to have an operation and they screw, they screw, they don't screw anything. Well, they don't do that. Anyway, I'm going on now. Um, yeah, you have to have an operation. They'll drill a titanium screw into your skull bone and then the abutment will stick out. Not through the skin. Once that's all healed, you'll then get the actual device, which will then clip onto it. So it'll sort of sit sort of around here, maybe. Um, another option is the cross aid, which is, uh, I'm never going to go, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but we'll go for it, uh, which is a contralateral he uh, route of signal, which has an external wire usually that connects behind the bad ear, so like that, and goes round to the hearing ear, and sits on, you know, and has a microphone on the hearing ear. But in my case, like this one's cross aid, but in my case, because my microtia, I can't actually get the microphone bit to sit on this ear. So that's why I haven't got the wire on the additional bit. Anyway, and another thing I wanted to talk about, because when I read this script back, like, with all the information that, I didn't really feel I sort of explained how it can how SSD can affect people. So I thought I'd just do a bit from my own personal view, and, like my experiences and sort of things. So life of SSD. Living with SSD, a lot of... A lot of people consider it to be normal and to be fine 
and it can easily live being deaf in one ear which it is true in a way but to be honest it does have a lot of difficulties like when you're out in a business scenario it can be so hard to pick up on a particular person's voice hearing cars and locating them especially when you're trying to cross a busy main road and you can hear a car but you don't know if it's in the distance if it's gone past if it's coming up and how far away it is from you you know one thing i struggle and i end up standing there for road going is a car coming has it gone and having to rely on my good ear which well as you can see from my hearing aid it's not that great in that ear but that's another story that i'll talk about later on and yeah so locating the sound from uh i forgot where i am now hearing cars and i've done that bit and locating the direction of where they come from and also a lot of people like myself who have single sided deafness can feel left out a lot of the time with group conversation things. I know a lot of people at college they'll they'll all sort of talk to each other, like in a big group or we'll be having a group discussion in class and they're all talking talking, the teachers talking and I'm just like, I like yeah, I don't actually know what's going on. I can't actually hear who's saying what um things like that really. It is a pain. <laughs> and you're just like, like yeah, I wanna take part in this discussion but I don't know what's being said, who's saying what and it to be honest I don't know if anyone else can relate to this who has a hearing loss, but if loads of people are talking at once, like I said within the classroom discussions, it doesn't sound like people's voices, it's just a load of noise. It's not, I don't know how to describe it really, other than just a load of noise. It's just noise, and you can say, like, I don't know what's going on, all I can hear is people talking, but you don't know what they're saying, it's just noise where everyone's so loud and talking at once. So yeah, if anyone relates to that, then you understand what I'm chatting about. If not, I hope you kind of got a rough idea. Uh, yeah, and also you can feel left out of social events, all because they cannot hear properly. And other normal hearing, and uh, other normal hearing people don't always fully understand this, and they don't understand why it's so hard to get. And uh, yeah, and they don't fully understand your hearing and think, oh, but you can hear in one ear. Why can't you hear me? I don't get it. I don't understand why you need things repeated a lot of times. I know I do. It drives me insane, but that's just me. <laughs> and also, it's really hard to get Bajas, uh, by an anchor hearing aids I talked about a minute ago. This is purely because doctors and specialists don't understand themselves how, how hard it is living with single sided deafness. And. Yeah, they think, oh, well, you can hear in one ear, you're fine, you can hear. It doesn't matter, you're not deaf, sort of thing. You've got one ear that you can't rely on, which is true, but it's not always that easy to rely on one ear. Um, but, yeah, it's actually not all that easy, like I said. Uh, these, de these devices are needed because they can they help, help not give you hearing because, like, hearing aids and things like that never actually restore your hearing or anything. They just amplify sound. But they help in that way because you can hear things louder. Like on this one I can increase and decrease the volume and things like that. And also it can be hard having single sided deafness because if you miss a bit of the conversation or don't hear something properly, you constantly have to ask people, can you repeat it again? No, I am not understand what you're saying, can you say it again? And sometimes you say three, four times, maybe more, which is frustrating for us with the hearing loss. But it also is frustrating for those who are hearing them we're talking to, trying to communicate. Um, and yeah, like I just said, I've just said that, but I'll say it again. Um, and like a lot of people get annoyed and frustrated with that. And will reply things like, oh, never mind, doesn't matter, oh, I'll tell you later. Or they'll only tell you bits of what they've said, like half of the story. And say it really, really quickly, so then you're trying to lip read really quickly. Or they'll talk to you really, really slowly and they're like, I'm not stupid, I'm just deaf, or you know, if you've got a hearing impairment, you don't need to speak that slow. Um, and yeah, they don't really understand how it affects us people with single sided deafness because to us it does matter if we miss bits of conversation because we don't want to be left out. And like I said, we're not dumb, we're not stupid. We just take extra time to hear things and need things repeated sometimes. But that doesn't make us inhuman. I mean, we're still humans. We still want people to communicate with us. We still want to communicate and talk to people. And, yeah, we're like everyone else in society. There's nothing wrong with us just...
because we can't hear. Um, and yeah, I just ask that if you come across anyone that has a hearing impairment or hearing loss or is deaf, then just take extra time to communicate. Try to actually communicate with them and take the extra time to go the extra mile and talk to them and communicate with them. Even if you have to write things down, repeat yourself five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, whatever. Just, you know, don't be afraid to communicate with us because we love communicating with people. Quite sociable little people. And don't feel stupid for repeating yourself because at the end of the day, we're the ones that are deaf or got the hearing loss, not you. And you're helping us. Um, to be honest, I know all, all of what I've just said sounds really, really negative, but obviously I was born with my single-sided deafness, but so obviously to me this is normal hearing, and I wouldn't actually change it for the world, even if someone said to me, oh, you know, you've got the choice to be born with full hearing, or you can be born with single-sided deafness, I'd always go for the single-sided deafness, I suppose, really. The reason I say that is because, like I say, you know, I've had it since I was born, which, what, nearly 18 years ago now. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, that sounds really bad. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's something that makes me who I am as a person. You know, it, it's what makes me me. It's just that little thing about me, really. And I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm not bothered about talking to people about it. And, you know, people ask questions, that's fine. I'm, you know, I'm more than willing to answer, sort of thing. And I'd rather have my hearing loss than be fully hearing, because it makes me appreciate things more. You know, things that I can hear, I appreciate that more. And yeah, you know, don't don't take your hearing for granted either because it's so easy to lose your hearing. Like, like having your iPod up too loud, you can lose it that way. And once you've lost it, you're not going to get it back. And yeah, it's just something that... Uh, I've gone off track now. But anyway, um, it's something I just feel... It's not something I, I feel I need to hide. Because like I say, it's something that makes me who I am. And I've never known any different anyway. Uh, and yeah, like, oh, I've said that. But um, I've never had hearing in my right ear for 18 years now. So, you know, this is just my way of life. And I, it's just something I have to learn to cope with and adapt to. And I will try to do that. Anyway, I hope this has helped to explain single-sided deafness to you a bit more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, that sort of thing. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.